If you take a look at my table, this it looks extremely complicated, yet it's not. In fact, this is going to be one of these fun recipes where they're great for hunting camp, they're great at home, they're great for a tailgate party. In fact, everybody loves them. I'm talking about the world of the portobello mushrooms. Now, sometimes they're referred to as the big game hunter's steak if they haven't been successful in getting a big game. So, we're going to show you how to cook these up where they're going to just be mouth-watering delicious like they would any sort of a steak. And it's really simple. The only reason I have all this stuff out of here is because you've got so many options as far as wanting to tailor make however you want to make these mushrooms to your particular taste. Now, first off, let's start with the High Mountain stuff. High Mountain has got a variety of different pre-packaged marinades. And the beauty of these are Hey, they're inexpensive as compared to buying something that's already pre-bottled. The mix itself actually is a dry mix that you can mix yourself. There's a zesty western, there's a sweet honey, and then there's a soy ginger. Well, for today, we've decided we're going to use the soy ginger. Pick your portobello mushrooms. You want firm-looking mushrooms. Now, you can get them in the package or you can get them fresh. When you get them fresh, obviously, what you're going to do is snap the stem out because it's usually got dirt and stuff on it. Now you can rinse this off real good. You can trim them up a little bit, cut the ends off, slice them in half, and they can go right in with your marinades when you're cooking the regular mushrooms. One thing you want to do that is once you've got your mushrooms already selected, wash them off real good, but don't start your marinade on them. Here's the reason why. If you look real close at any of these, you're going to see that they've got gills or they've got fins on them. Well, if you fill them full of water, your marinade is not going to take to it. So once you've washed them, set them out, let them air dry, let them reopen up a little bit. What you don't want to see is something like this, where it's still a little bit too wet. This needs to be aired out another half an hour, 45 minutes. Just let the wind blow on it. There's no big deal. So once you've got them, got them all cleaned up, trimmed up, and what have you, here comes the fun part. We started with the soy mar ginger marinade for today, but you can make it any way you want to. And now here's the versatility factor. Rather than you buying something off the shelf that's already mixed with whatever they decided the spices are, High Mountain gives you the option of being able to use your own oils and your own vinegars. Now, to make it really simple, you can pretty well use, oh, like let's say an extra virgin olive oil. You can use a white vinegar. That's the basic, but you can now custom tailor it to your own tastes if you want to. My favorite working with the uh, soy ginger is to use extra virgin olive oil, not use a white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, possibly if you wanted a sweeter taste, the red wine vinegar if you wanted a sweeter taste. But you're talking about a really meaty kind of dish, even though it's a fungi, even though it's a mushroom. Our favorite for something like this is to use a balsamic vinegar. Now you can take all this stuff into camp if you want to or to your tailgate party, or if you're really smart, what you're going to do is take and make your mix up ahead of time. You start with about a pound of the mushrooms. This is the minimum. You're going to need on this, you're going to need two tablespoons of the actual marinade. Pour it in there. You're going to add then four tablespoons of olive oil. Now again, you can cater the oil. You can use a flax oil. You can use peanut oil. You can use whatever type you want to. Canola oil, eh, as a last resort. Give it a little extra flavor. Stick with your virgin olive oil type stuff. The vinegars, one tablespoon. Everything's mixed in here. That's enough for about a pound. Obviously, the secret is you're going to want to marinate them. And here you can marinate them for an hour up to about 24 hours if you really want the good flavor. Once everybody's been washed and dried thoroughly, simply take your mushrooms. Again, I'd probably put the uh, Tupperware people and some of the others out of business because of the fact I don't want to have to wash everything up. When I'm ready, I want to just throw it into a bag like this. Mix up your stuff really good. Pop your lid off and just pour it in. Zip your bag up, leave a little bit of air, because what you're going to want to do is like what we've done with some of the other marinades and some of the other recipes, is we want to be able to get it thoroughly in there. Again, you want the flavor to not just coat the outside of the mushroom, 
but you want it to be able to get into the gills or the fins. That's where your flavor is really going to be absorbed. And once this is done, throw it in the ice box. If it's cool outside, you don't even have to refrigerate it. Let it sit for an hour at minimum, up to 24 hours. And, oh, let me tell you, now you're going to see where the mushrooms have actually taken on a little of the character of the oil and the vinegar. A little slimy, but look at that. This is where your flavor is going to come in. See all of the spices that are in on top? See how it's gone in and actually filled the holes in the gills? Set them on your smoker rack. And again, on this one, you don't really even need to pre-spray. A lot of stuff will stick. Some of the vegetables will stick if you don't pre-spray. Well, this one's got so much oil in it already that you're in good shape. Simply do that, and if you want to, pour your marinade back into the jar, because this is good stuff. And unlike chicken or something like that, you don't really have to worry about much contamination. Shake it up a little bit, and those little spots where maybe it's a little on the light side, drizzle it in. Make sure you fill up those gaps with as much flavor as possible. And that's about it. At this point, you're almost ready to go into the fire. Now, we've got behind us here smoking some sausage. This particular recipe calls for something where you're going to want some moisture. So you start with some water. You start with some wine. You can add beer. Right now, I've got beer in on my sausage, which will make a nice complement to this. All you're going to do at this point Oh gosh, here comes the smoke. Kick your smoker open. Find your slot. Put your mushrooms in. Get your temperature up. And again, the wood wise, you can use whatever you want to. Cherry, apple, hickory, all of it works ex exceptionally well. You're going to want your temperature up between 250 and 300. And you're going to want to be able to cook it for I'd say about an hour and check it. Just like a good steak. You don't want to overcook it. You don't want it dried and all shriveled up. You want it to be able to come out moist and tender. And in about an hour, we're going to pull them. Okay, it's been about an hour. And as you can see now, the portobellas at about 300 degrees are still nice and soft and pliable. This is your meatless steak, as they say. But these are awesome. Any sort of a side that you can put down on the side with it, all you got to do is slice it up into just little steak sized bites and probably the best way and the best secret is high mountain steak seasoning. You want a little extra zing to it, a light sprinkle, just about like that. Oh. <laughs> what do you say? That's sure to please. If you don't get an elk or a big deer or an antelope or something like that, Make sure you got these in camp. This is going to definitely be a crowd pleaser for everybody.